Thank you uh, so much, Chairman Murkowski. And, and uh, um, what she didn't say was we just came off a big uh, um, victory on the floor, bipartisan victory in terms of an energy bill. We haven't had an energy bill since uh, 2007. Uh, and Senator Murkowski and Ranking Member Maria Cantwell, I think, came up with a very solid uh, proposal, and we hope the House will work with us. And I, I uh, just want to congratulate you for that and also say I hope those, those same bipartisan credentials we can both work on together in this committee to get, uh, get things done. Welcome, Administrator McCarthy, and thank you for joining us today. It's um, been quite a year since you last testified before this subcommittee. The EPA finalized the Clean Power Plan. This is a critical step. It will reduce carbon pollution and will make real progress on climate change. The EPA also proposed standards for methane to protect public health and the environment. We worked together on last year's omnibus bill and fought off dangerous environmental riders. And we made history when the United States took part in the Paris Agreement to fight climate change. The U.S. and 200 other countries agreed to work together to fight rising sea levels and climbing temperatures. On Friday, Earth Day, Secretary of State Kerry will sign the agreement for the United States. It will be a monumental step. It will seal our commitment with our global partners to fighting climate change. The EPA's Clean Power Plan will frame our efforts to meet that commitment. While the Supreme Court did issue a stay on the Clean Power Plan, that decision was not on the merits of the case. And I'm confident that the Clean Power Plan will prevail. It will be flexible and it will meet the unique needs of each state. I'm pleased to see that EPA has not skipped a beat. It will keep helping states that are working to reduce carbon pollution, providing funding and technical help, ensuring that these plans are tailored to each state's needs. I want to hear more about how the EPA plans to build on these efforts in fiscal year 2017. It takes time, effort, and resources to make progress on international agreements and new standards. But that's why I'm also worried. Last year, the budget deal allowed us to make targeted investments for many agencies, but not so for the EPA. Its operating budget was frozen in last year's budget deal, left at the sequester level. Over the past decade, its budget has dropped 10 percent in real terms, and the agency has lost 10 percent of its staff. The, the um, fiscal year 2017 budget request proposes important increases to support clean air, clean water, and basic agency functions. I think the EPA has reached a critical point, and I think it's time for us to get realistic about providing the resources that the EPA needs. Administrator McCarthy, I want to thank you for making sure your draft budget supports programs that are important to New Mexico, especially uranium cleanup. But I think we need to look closely at the proposed offsets, in particular the 11 percent cut to state grants for clean water and drinking water. Across our countries, communities like Flint, Michigan face serious water contamination. In my state of New Mexico, over 20 water systems exceed the EPA's lead, level, uh, lead action level, including St. Vincent's Hospital in Santa Fe, New Mexico. This is very troubling to me. I'm also concerned about EPA's proposal to reverse progress on the U.S.-Mexico border water program. This is critical to ensure our border communities have clean water. But Administrator McCarthy, my top priority today is to get firm answers about EPA's response to communities in New Mexico, Arizona, and Colorado after the Gold King mine spill. The spill was an accident, but the EPA made several serious mistakes and the EPA owes it to the Navajo Nation and the state of New Mexico to make things right as soon as possible. I appreciate that $2 million was made available for long-term water quality monitoring. This funding is greatly needed by affected states and tribes, but the EPA must sustain that commitment. And I'm very disappointed at how long, ago, how long it has taken the EPA to process reimbursements submitted by the state and the Navajo Nation. And I'm frustrated that eight months later, we still don't have an official finding of tort responsibility, despite public assurances that EPA takes full responsibility for this bill. We need a fair compensation process up and running for those who were affected so that people can file claims and receive compensation. I look forward to getting clear answers from you and when this will be corrected.
Administrator, I want to add one note and thank you to you and your team for all your technical assistance as we work on the many drafts of TOSCA. Uh, the program office and the general counsel have been invaluable, and I hope you feel as optimistic as I do that we can get this done. Thank you again for appearing before us today, and I look forward to a good discussion. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. Um, the, the EPA's Gold King uh, mine accident was devastating. Uh, Administrator McCarthy, as you know, to the people downstream in New Mexico, Colorado, and Arizona. The EPA is responsible for a number of serious mistakes, technical failures, and management failures. And these are deeply disappointing, and they've had a, a serious long-term impact. After the accident, the EPA was slow to notify downstream communities, communities that depend on the river for their livelihood, the Navajo Nation and the people of northwestern New Mexico are still frustrated. They spent several million dollars to respond to the emergency, but eight months after the spill, the state and the Navajo Nation are still waiting to be reimbursed. And the eight months after the spill, we're waiting for a legal decision from EPA about whether it is responsible for individual damages so that people can be compensated. Those impacted deserve compensation. And I want reimbursements for New Mexico taxpayers and for the Navajo long-term water monitoring and a promise that Gold, the Coal King mine, the source of this pollution, will be cleaned up. Administrator McCarthy, you've said publicly several times that EPA takes full responsibility for the spill, but the EPA hasn't made the legal finding of tort responsibility. When will we have that decision so that the affected communities can finally begin seeking compensation for damages what specific steps have to be taken for the tort finding to be made, and can you give us a firm date on when we will have that decision? Uh, I, I wish I could give you a firm date. I believe it's happening soon, sir, but it, 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 I have to be independent and hands off of that process. It's being done by a, a claims individual that's in a uh, fairly insulated process working with the Department of Justice. So I do know that people are anxious. We have about 57 federal tort claims that have been submitted, and we certainly want to get information out to people as soon as we can. Thank you. The, the uh, tort finding is just one of many issues mm -hmm. raised by stakeholders. Uh, the Navajo recently sent you a letter detailing their priorities to address the damage caused by the spill. EPA responded in writing yesterday with a general commitment to continue working with the Navajo Nation, but we still need to know what specific steps EPA is going to take to address the Navajo's concerns, and I will follow up with you on those uh, questions for the record. Yet specifically, I do want to ask, what is the status of claims submitted by the Navajo and the state of New Mexico, and can I get your commitment right now on a date certain for all of these requests to be fully processed? Well, in terms of reimbursements, we have reimbursed the Navajo uh, for their expenses of $158,000. There is significant additional claims where we're working with them to get the information we need to determine what's, what's eligible for payment under the law. Uh, it, likewise, in, in, for New Mexico, we have reimbursed $328,000. You know, in total, we're working through this system in as, as best a collaborative way as we can with the states and with the tribes. We've also identified and continue with monitoring um, in the area, and we've also identified $2 million to be able to work with those states and tribes to define a longer-term strategy moving forward so that we can identify whether or not there continues to be challenges moving forward. And as you know, we've also put the, uh, the Bonita Mine area um, as a proposed uh, Superfund site with the support of, of the local communities as well as the state of Colorado, and we much appreciate that, that significant step forward. Yeah, and they really appreciate that work, and thank you uh, for the work on the, the Superfund side. I know working through some of those local issues was, was very difficult. Um, I think it would go a long way if you could reiterate EPA's commitment to the Navajo and other stakeholders. Uh, could you state for the record again that the EPA intends to make things right for the Navajo and others affected by this spill? You know, the, the, right after the spill, I went to the area and I said EPA would take full responsibility. I still intend to do that, and the agency will. Great. The, um, Administrator McCarthy, the, um, 
the, as you talked about Superfund and getting this on the national the Gold King Mine on the national priorities list, can you confirm that finalizing this proposal will make the site eligible for full and complete remediation? And does your budget request provide enough resources to begin the cleanup? Well, I, the the fiscal year budget that we're proposing does increase our Superfund uh, um, um, funds uh, by about twenty million dollars. Um, and so we, we do think that will give us an ability, certainly, to add more sites into the mix. It will take, I think, a significant amount of time to both assess that area and to determine what to, what to do and, and how to take the steps moving forward we need to. And so we'll continue to work through that process. And we'll continue to make steady progress. It's been a long time coming. Now that we have it in the system, we don't want to fail to get it, the work done. Yeah, Administrator McCarthy, as you know, the Clean Power Plan uh, provides a lot of flexibility to states to craft their particular uh, emission targets. Uh, has the EPA provided guidance to states that are working on strategies under the Clean Power Plan? And can you explain more about how EPA is helping states develop plans to meet the new standards? And does your budget request continue support in fiscal year 2017? It does. It, it, it includes support of about $50.5 million to continue to work with states that voluntarily want to continue moving forward to develop their plans, as well as funding to support tools that the agency would be able to develop for that purpose, including an accounting system. You know, states want to work together on this. They want to know and be prepared for when the court uh, uh, concludes its review of this to be able to move forward quickly, and we're trying to respond to that. And that's what these monies are all about, to provide them direct money to be able to, for states to be able to develop their plans and for us to be able to support them with the tools they'll need to get that work done. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair, for your courtesies. The, the um, Administrator McCarthy, reducing uh, methane emissions is a critical part of our nation's fight against climate change. Methane's a serious problem. It has 25 times the heat trapping potential of carbon dioxide, and a recent EPA study found that methane emissions from oil and gas production are even higher than we had estimated. It's a serious budget issue, too. In New Mexico alone, venting and flaring has cost the state more than $42 million in lost royalty revenue since 2009. Reducing methane emissions is a win-win for the environment and for our state budgets. And that's why I'm supportive of the administration's goal to cut methane emissions by 40 to 45 percent. I think the proposed regulations on new and modified sources are a good start, but we need EPA to set effective, workable standards for leak detection and repairs and to investigate emerging technologies that could cut emissions even more. What is the timeline for the proposed standards and what is the plan for a proposal on existing sources of methane emissions, and does the proposed rule consider industry feedback to minimize the potential impact on production when oil prices are low? We do have proposals moving forward to finalization this spring, uh, but relative to the existing sources right now, uh, one of the biggest challenges we see is that the most recent greenhouse gas data shows us there's a lot of methane emissions that we had not accounted for prior to. And what we are doing uh, instead of uh, uh, immediately moving to proposal is we're putting out an information collection request to the industry because we need to understand better where those emissions are being generated. We need to understand exactly what you've asked us. What are the technologies that we can take advantage of and what are the costs associated with those so we could provide reasonable standards moving forward and continue to work with states that have really good knowledge of the industry in their own states and are, many of them are regulating them and some very effectively. So that we're not duplicating and we're providing the kind of benefits that we, we all are looking for. Thank you. That's encouraging to hear that. From uh, I, now talking about Navajo uranium uh, cleanup, yes. from 1944 to 1986, 4 million tons of uranium ore were mined in Arizona, Utah, and New Mexico from lands belonging to the Navajo Nation. The demand for uranium mining skyrocketed during World War II when little was known about the dangers. Uh, even as we learn more, the federal government repeatedly failed to take steps to protect workers and their families. 
Uh, I've visited the homes of workers impacted by uranium contamination. I've met the widows of men who worked in the mines and died in their early 30s. Uranium mining has a tragic legacy, and it's our responsibility to prevent more deaths. Over 500 abandoned uranium mine claims remain in the Navajo Nation, including 145 in New Mexico. The areas around the Church Rock mine spill, the site of the largest accidental radiation release in U.S. history, still needs extensive cleanup. Yeah. I appreciate the EPA's efforts to clean up uranium on Navajo land during the agency's first five-year plan. We worked very closely with you on that, but more work still needs to be done given the extent of the contamination. EPA is now starting a second five-year cleanup plan. What are EPA's specific goals for this second round of cleanup, and how much funding is set aside in the budget for this year and next year? And the uh, Church Rock Mine near Gallup is the EPA's top priority. I'm concerned about how long cleanup is scheduled to take. Uh, we have heard it may not be begin until 2020 and may take seven to nine years to finish. Why will the cleanup take so long to start and finish, and can we speed it up? Well, just specific to this year, um, uh, we plan to spend uh, $16.6 million this year looking at 46 high-priority mines that are located near homes and streams, and the work will include replacing uh, contaminated homes and providing water. But the good news is with the settlements that we've been able to achieve with Tronox, there is significant funding that, w that we're working on with the states and in particular with the Navajo Nation as well. Um, to try to continue to make steady progress. Relative to Church Rock Mine, you're right, it is a, a, a complicated site. Um, it is uh, projected to take a little longer. I think part of that is related to the fact that we have to go through some nuclear regulatory permitting obligations associated with that. But I will do the best I can to make sure that we're providing the kind of uh, prompt response that we can. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I, talking a little bit about the Mexico border water funding, yes. uh, Chairman Murkowski, thank you for your work to prioritize the Mexico border water infrastructure program in 2016. Our funding is tight these days, and I appreciate you recognize the clean water challenges we face on the border. Many border communities lack water and sewer services. This program's help. It helps ensure that these underserved areas finally get their basic sanitary services. It's, it's critical in New Mexico, but I'm concerned about the program's future. Yeah. There are at least $800 million in remaining projects, so we have a huge need out there, and I'm disappointed that the budget request is just $5 million. It's hard to imagine how we make progress at that pace. Administrator McCarthy, can you share more information about the estimated need for water infrastructure projects on the U.S.-Mexico border? What can EPA do to better meet the long-term needs of our border communities? Well, Senator, I, ha I happen to spend a little bit of time along that border, and the, the needs are rather dramatic, as, as you well know. Um, it's been a very successful opportunity uh, to, to look at how we support projects in that area that will both be protective of local public health as well as our tremendous water resources in those areas. We have a number of projects that are in the, in the pipeline that have been funded. Um, you're right, we are uh, looking at a fiscal year 17 proposal of $5 million. That will allow us to continue to add new projects into the system, but we're trying very hard to work within limited resources to be able to continue to construct the 14 projects that are already funded and in the system, as well as to continue to add in a reasonable way. Uh, but certainly, the more funding we have, the more that we can get done. Great. Thank you very much. And thank you again, Chairman Murkowski, for your courtesies.